Hello. How are we all tonight? I'll just give you a little minute to see who's going to join. Hello. Let me know if you're there. Give me a little thumbs up or a hello. Just to let me know if I've got anybody with me. I am looking forward to doing some hair on Grace. How's everybody doing? Who have I got with me tonight? Hi Dawn, how are you? Nice to have you here. So tonight we're going to do some hair. Hi Lynn and Teresa. I like your new picture, Teresa. Hi Stella. It's nice to have you with me. Hi Heather and Janet. Lots of familiar names. It's nice to see you all. I'm hoping everybody's doing well. We're in horrible times, I know. So it's quite nice just to try and find some things that can keep us feeling positive. I'm going to try and do some more Facebook Lives. So if you can let me know if you're home furloughed or you're isolated or like last time, I'm happy to choose a day where we sit and do a little bit of drawing. We can choose different things each time and just draw till our heart's desired, just to take our mind off things, to keep ourselves in and... Um, keeping our minds active and being creative, I think, is a really good way of expressing and just being mindful in the moment and not worrying and being anxious, which is something we're all doing, isn't it? Anyway, I think I've got quite a few. It's nice to have you all here. And um, thank you for joining me again. It's been nice to see some of your, your pictures in the group to see how far you've come doing your eyes and things. So tonight, I thought we'll do Grace and I thought I would show you some different ways that we could um, do her. Like, the original artwork is just this one and she's got a little swirl in her hair. And the reason I do swirls is because they're a way of release. They're really good at, at, as a, a metaphorical image for releasing things. But she doesn't have to be used as that. That could become a flower or it could, could become something that's got ribbons coming out of it. But I thought we could make her as a snail. Not everybody wants a snail in their hair, but when they're whimsical, it's quite nice. So I thought we'll give her a snail and we'll do her hair. So hopefully you're all happy to follow along doing that. I mean, you can have this snail and also do lots of little flowers. You can rub this fringe out and change that if you like and just have lots of flowers and make a garland if you want. But we'll start off, I think, by drawing a snail. So tonight, all you need are your pencils and a normal pencil. I'm just using my Pentel, this one here for my drawing. And... Um, and yeah, I'll just let you know the colours as we do her hair. So, shall we get going? Right. So, to make her snail, I'm just going to draw a little um, line underneath this um, spiral. So, let me bring it down a little bit. So, just a little faint line going around this spiral. And then just having it come up into a little sort of hook and then down that did that wasn't much of a hook that I just did but so that so that's the back of the snail hopefully you can see that and then if you just follow the line up up the swirl a little bit and then come out around about here I'm sorry if my hand starts shaking because I do I start getting nervous when I'm doing this and then have it join onto your swirl. I might have to rub this little bit out. So just, just like that. I'm going to rub that bottom bit out because that went a bit squee with. 
and then just a couple of little um, swirls coming out of the top of the head. So if I just get my rubber, I'm just going to rub this away. So you don't have to put a snail in their hair, in our hair, if you don't want to. And of course, this line here I'll rub out as well that's inside there. So if you want to rub some of that away. You might not get all of it away, but you'll be able to rub most of it away and then we can colour in that. So she's now got a little snail in her hair. And if you want to, we'll put a couple of flowers there as well and then we'll do the rest of her hair. So, for a flower, the easy way to do one is if you just do a little swirl. This is one way of doing a flower. So just a little swirl like so. Do you want me to move it down a little bit? Hopefully you can see that. So that's the inside bit. And then if you then just find a point and then just start to do a little petal coming around and swirling back in. And then picking up where you left off there and coming back in and doing another swirl. Or another petal, not a swirl. And then do the same again. So you're kind of overlapping each time. Let me know if I'm going at the right pace for you. So just continue that we're doing that. And you can make it as big or as small as you like. You could bring that right down over this hairline if you wanted to. I'm just going to give her another one here. So there she's got one flower. And from that, sorry, I'm making it, making the camera move. From that flower, I'm going to have a line coming out like so. Yeah. And then have a small flower on there as well. So just a little, so just do one little um, petal and then just follow it around like so. So yeah, we've got that one. And then from the center of that, have another little bit of a swirl coming out. So she's got like a hair garland that's gonna have another flower here. So if you do like, just two at one side and then two at the other, like so. And then have some little leaves that are coming down. So we'll let, have, have the garland sort of end around there and then have just a little leaf at either side. So there, that's how I've got a little bit of a hair garland started. And she's got a snail. Now, if you want, you can fill that up with lots of different flowers or you can follow it all the way along her head and make lots of flowers in there. But I'm just going to do it like that for now so that I can show you some of her hair as well. So, but if... If I was doing it properly, I would do another little line here, put another flower there, maybe maybe bring another flower down here and maybe even have a bit coming over her eye. But that gives you a start for your garland and we'll just start doing a little bit of her hair because we all know how quickly this hour passes, don't we? Right, so the colours that I'm going to use in our hair tonight are... So we have... This one, which is burnt okra. So if you want to grab your burnt okra. And also the Van Dyck brown. I'm also using an orange. And it's the Cadmian orange. And a walnut brown. and also burnt sienna. So they're the main colors. So don't worry if you don't have them, just as long as you have, have them going from the lightest shade up to the darkest shade. So I'm going to start off with my lightest shade, which is the burnt okra. And start, I'm going to use this hairline, you know, I'm thinking if you're going to do more flowers, you can, if not, just have this little flower over here. Yeah, and we'll just concentrate so you can get our fringe and things in. Yeah. So 
to make her hair look like it's kind of move not moving but it's kind of thick and coming over you want to have this sort of motion this sort of um shape starting off so if you want to go into the center of her head starting right at the line here and then start to get that shape in so that you know which direction her hair sort of going in and then just follow that and then just starting all the time at this bottom fringe part just starting to sweep these little lines up like so and take them all the way up to the top so you really want to have a nice sharp pencil for this and because we've got flowers and things going on we're just going to have the line going up to the flower trying to get it to go as close to that line as possible and then having the rest come out at the top nice little sweeps so just doing that all the way along so finding where your fringe is but remember of course if you don't like this shape of fringe just rub it out and put in a straight one or give her a flick you know have a little play so just the same sort of movement now now that you've got that first one in you kind of know the direction that your hair is moving in and just take that all the way up, right off the edge of the, the page. So let me know, hopefully, give me a thumbs up if I'm going at the right pace for you, if you need me to slow down, or, you know. I'd just like to know that you're all quite happy. And that you can follow along. So by getting these little individual lines, you automatically start to see um, how how it can line up and be hair, if you know what I mean. So you want to have lots and lots of layers and the more layers, the thicker her hair will look. Oops, sorry. Let's just try and get it off the page. So I'm just going quite fast now. Now that we've got that motion, keeping it going in the same sort of direction. Just trying to get as much of that filled, get that first layer in. So try and keep it light, you know, try not to burnish it yet. So she's got this little bit here at the side as well, so it just needs to come up and around. And again, same, just with this flower in place, just try and get as many little lines up, not going into the flower. And if you're finding it hard, you can do it from the flower down. You know, and that'll help to build up the shadow in there as well as you move forward. Yeah. So again, just more lines. And, you know, you should get into a little groove. It'll, you'll end up just, once you've started doing the first couple of lines, the rest will come easy. And when you're at the top of the page, like what we've done here with the flower, you can come in from the top down as well if you want. And I always, I'm just going to move those two out as well. I always, you know, anybody who follows me all the time will know that I always edge that little bit off as well with a pencil so that it looks more finished and then just bring it in. And if you find it easy, you can turn it around and do it in that direction from so like you can turn it around like so and do it that way if that's easier for you to get this top bit to make sure you've got it with loads of colour on there 
And then it, lo it keeps the illusion that her head's going off the page and that you're not just randomly stopping it. You know? Oops. And I mean, it can it can run away from you a little bit. So just I just hold it as best I can and then... Sorry. I'm really bad for that. I'm going to take it off the camera. So same at this corner bit. Just... Oops. So just do plenty of that. Right, now I'm going to bring in a different colour. Wait, we'll maybe get a little bit more of this around this flower done. I just don't want you getting bored because we're doing the same colour. So we'll just get a wee bit more in. How are we doing? Little flicks. And a wee bit here, and then you know, you can do the rest around that side bit yourself once we've got there. So just try and get it right up to that flower. You don't want any white between there and there. Right, so that's us. We've got our first sort of layer in. Obviously, you still have this little bit to do, but I'm going to try and get some more layers in for you. So, I mean, you can then go in and do a little few more dark ones when you run here. Just get some more lines in. And where the, where the fringe is, you know, you can see where the line would be. So just try and get some more of those in. Right, next layer. I'm going to be using the, the Van Dyke or the Van Dyke, whatever it is, Van Dyke Brown. And do a little bit more of the same. So it's always starting right at the bottom, at the fringe. And always with a sharp pencil so that you're getting nice defined lines. And if you keep every now and again, just twisting your pencil around you'll get that little sharp edge again. So I'm always twizzling it. If you wonder what I'm doing, that's why I'm doing it. So now that we're coming up, I'm going to leave this sort of area here that it's going to be a little bit lighter as well so that we can get a nice shine on her hair. So just go and in this direction, try, try not have it that it's all the same like a square. So if you can have some layer, some of the hair that's coming up further than the others, and then you get like a, a sort of staggered shine rather than it looks like a block. So you can now turn it back around if you want. I'm going to turn her upside down. And do the same coming from this area so that you're coming and bringing these lines down into this shiny area. Now, if you miss getting right to the edge, you can always do that at the end. You can go over it and create like a shadow with a darker pencil if, if it's annoying you too much trying to get right to the edge, like you can just do little circular motions to fill in that area at the top. You know, don't stress out about feeling that you're not getting the lines to go all the way. But if you can persevere with it and try it, then do. So because we've already originally put that sort of sweep in, we're naturally finding where the lines go and they're going in the same direction. I'm sorry about last week as well. The Facebook just cut out. I didn't get to say goodbye 
to any of you and I've no idea why it did that. I don't know if I did it, if it was because I did it through a, an event and I said that it was going to be for an hour. I don't know whether Facebook decided that was my hour up or if it was a technical hitch or what, but, you know, I would never just cut out without saying goodbye deliberately, so I hope that you don't think that I just decided I'd had enough. <laughs> That's me shutting up shop without saying goodbye or thank you or anything. So, just get a few more layers of this brown in. And try and get this sort of staggered. So just light area that comes in. So ideally, you know, you you can your pencils can go down quite quickly with hair because it's nice to have that really sharp line but I find as well that if you save as well your really sharp ones for your last layer then you can really get some defined lines in there. I'm going to turn her back around again and um, get some more lines coming up from this flower as well. Now, really, I should be sharpening my pencil now because it's starting to feel blunt. But for the sake of... Wait, I'm going to sharpen it. It only takes two seconds, doesn't it? And it'll let you sharpen yours as well if you have to. See? See how much finer and nicer it is when you've got a sharp line. So again, making sure there's no white between the flower and the hair. And you can do your little circular motions around there if you have to, just to get all that covered. And again, that starts to build up like the feeling that the flower is causing an indent in her hair and it's causing her hair to come up and over a little bit. Can you see that? Right, and a little bit here on this bit of her fringe. So if anybody's got any questions or anything, you know, feel free just to send me a message or put it in the comments and I'll ha happily answer you where if I know the answer. I might not know the answer, but I'll try. So there, we've got that little bit there. And again, just little circular motions around there to get that bit of a shadow starting to come in there. And then still just a few more strokes. So... Hair is a really nice relaxing one to do. So if you're sitting in front of the telly and you're just wanting to get your pencils out, it's the same with the skin. When you're spending a lot of time getting the skin built up, it's really nice just to sit and zone out with it for a little while. So by doing this now, hopefully you're starting to see that there's this little area here that's starting to look lighter. And this is going to be a shiny spot. So where we've come in from the top as well, try and have it staggered. So we've got one hair long, darker hair long here. And maybe if we bring one down longer here, just to try and have it that it's got a bit more interest than just being a block. Right, I'm going to put, bring in a little bit of orange. So if you have your cadmium orange or any sort of shade of orange, or if you prefer, you can use like a cream or a yellow. Um, you can use your cream as well, actually. Where is my cream? Or your white. 
any of those pale shades and again have them nice and sharp so i'm just going to sharpen my my cream and i'm going to use some cream and some orange just to show how you can help make this highlighted area look a little bit more like it's a gradual thing so in this area with the cream i'm going to start bringing in you won't see a lot of difference but where it's white if you put in your cream there and then the same coming down just at the ends so there'll be some bits that still have a little bit of white in there but Did you see that starting to make that look shiny just by doing that? Right, then if you bring in a little bit of the, your orange and then again, just on the ends, every now and again, bring that in and the same from the top, just down a little bit on that shiny area. So you can put some of that orange in some of the white bits that are further up as well, if you like. And just have some coming down to meet this white bit. And that should hopefully make it start to look a little bit shinier. So that's us done a little start on that bit. But she needs a little few more layers. But we've now emphasised that area a little bit more. So I'm now going to use the Burnt Sienna. I really like this pencil because it's a warm tone. So it's like when you get like highlights and different or low lights in your hair. I find that that one and also the first one that we did the burnt okra these are really nice pencils to give those sort of different shades in your hair so now with the the burnt sienna just doing more of the same of what we've already done with a nice sharp pencil and if you can try and get it to go more into the little white lines that are left over because you don't want any white lines in your hair nobody does do they? <laughs> we pay a lot of money to make sure we don't have any white lines, don't we? So now, hopefully by, this is us on our third layer. By doing lots of really thin lines, I'm hoping that you're starting to see how that is starting to look like hair. And the thinner the line, the better, because when we look at our hair, it's just thousands upon thousands of really thin hair and that is what you're trying to achieve i have a noisy fridge can you hear it is it just me anyway So if you bring that colour up into where you've got your orange as well, let it just go in nice and um, gradual. Still keeping that orangey tone in there. Is it starting to come together, everybody? How are we all doing? Let me know if you are colouring alongside me or if you're saving it. I am going to keep all my videos, so all the Facebook Lives I've got, they are all on my page. They are in my group as well. So if you are fed up during this lockdown scenario and you haven't gone in and done them, you know, feel free to go in and have a go at some of them. I've seen so many of you who said you couldn't draw 
in the early days. I've seen what you can all do now and you most certainly all can draw. I'm really proud. So think of how far you've all come just since this whole um, horrible business of lockdowns and things. But the positive is you've took some time out for yourselves and you've enhanced your skills, haven't you? So we're going to turn her over again, like what we did. So I'm going to sweep her around and do the same with this pencil from the top as well. Starting to bring that down. I'll try and not have my hand cover what I'm doing. So I'm starting to feel now that this pencil needs sharpening. So when you're coming in from the side, if you start off on the outside, it's providing you're not drawn on your furniture. <laughs> if you've got a piece of paper underneath or a book, just start drawing from it and then that will start to slide in quite easy. Can you see that? And then it, it looks more like the hair is going off the page and not just stopping. And again, go along the side and fill that in so that it's not white. Course, I mean, I feel bad that I haven't done this little bit. Well, um, we might come back and do this little bit. But, you know, we've got some more layers to do. So, again, from the flower coming down with this pencil. And have it, if you kind of have it sweeping a little bit, again, that'll give that feeling that the flower's indented in our hair and causing our hair to move a little bit. Right, now we're going to do another layer. So I'm going to turn her back around. And if we then get our darkest colour, our walnut brown, a nice sharp pencil, and we'll do some more of the same. So starting right on the hairline and getting a nice fine line. And I'm just bringing it up a little bit for now because I want it to feel like it gradually gets lighter and lighter so that it's dark, at its darkest here at the ends. And if you start off slow and just do it gradually so that you can see keep stopping in and having a look then you can see if you want it to go up a little bit further and then you can do the whole what we did trying to graduate the shine so it's not all sitting like a square on the top of her head it just makes it look more natural so and this is a nice time as well if, if you have got any more white lines in there trying to get them filled And if you can take it right to that line as well. Because then you can start to create your nice little shadow coming in onto her face as well. So I'm going to have the darkness go all the way to the end because I'm going to assume that her shine is just sort of here. So... And just seeing where where her hair line is on her face, I tend to do it dark in there. So if you want to just press down a little bit with your dark pencil and emphasise that line, that little bit will eventually become black because there's a shadow coming from her face onto her hair. So and I'm just I'm just going to overemphasize where that line is and take over. You know, you don't have to follow the lines of the hair that I've already done. So as well, we've got these wee swir swirly bits that I'm forgetting about. So if you want to go back to your light tone and have it nice and sharp, sorry. Then we can start to emphasise these wee wisp wispy little bits as well. So 
So if you can still just go back in and with this colour, come down and then pick up on these little lines. So just every now and again. Now, if you don't like these little lines, you can rub them away. But I quite like giving them little wispy bits. And of course, you can make them longer as well. I'll bring it in so you can see. <laughs> you know, don't don't feel confined to the lines that I've already made. Make them bigger if you want or rub them away. And so I've done it light initially and then I'm going to, to help make it look like it's connected to her head. Just bring in some of the darker ones as well. So just if you start in her hair and then come down, then it looks like it's connected. So and if you keep some of them lighter and so the ones at the front look like they're darker and then the ones that are lighter look like they've gone behind a little bit. If that makes sense, then I'm just going to darken that a little bit. So yeah, just continuing a little bit more dark here and coming up off the page. I'm going to turn her back around again. So I think you're getting the idea, aren't you, what we're doing. Just whatever we do at the top, at, the, at her fringe, we're doing again from the top and trying as well, as hard as we can, to bring it right to the end. And if you can't, you know, just we'll, we can do that black or just create a shadow there just to help it. Oh, sorry, I'm off the page again. Oh dear, I do get annoyed at myself for doing that. I'm so sorry. Right, so I'm just going to, with circular motions, because I haven't gotten right to the end yet, just start to fill that in to make that dark. Get rid of that white. You don't want that white there at all. And again, on the edge, with your darkest tone as well, just... See, the time is flying, isn't it? I do think it's such a quick hour when we do this. Right, now with this colour, doing the same again. And so every now and again, if you try and have one darker than the other, twisting it around as well to get your sharp end... And then coming in from the side as well, with that same motion, have that darker. And we're getting in further and closer to the shine and then bringing in a staggered, have one hair longer than some of the others, have them all different lengths. And then I'm going to bring some up as well from the bottom. When I'm in this position, I can kind of see. Right, how are we doing? Right, I'm going to bring in again some more of the orange and the cream. So if you have... Um, I don't know where my cream is gone. Let me sharpen this. I've got an ivory. So if you have some ivory or some white, then we can sh brighten this up even more. And then we'll start doing a little bit of her flat. Oh, we've got the snail as well to color, haven't we? Right. So with the ivory, 
just emphasizing this shiny area again putting some more layers in there so if you see any bits that are still got white in them you can put your ivory in over them and you can also go in over the top of your other color as well just to so that it doesn't look like it's not um so that it looks more like it's a gradual thing rather than a all of a sudden just stop. And then again, if you have your cream and then just on the ends, put some more cream in there just to help highlight that and take some of it up into the white bits. And keep some of it that it's just the, the ivory or the white right in the center. So you've got it more that it's staggered with the creamy colours here and then it's more ivory in the centre or, or your white, whatever one you wanted to use. And then it becomes like a gradual thing rather than a, a random thing. And then the same at the other side. Just keep darkening that up a little bit. Can you see the shine starting to appear? I hope so. And so you can continue. You want to do lots more layers. You, you, you know, it needs layer upon layer upon layer still. But I'm hoping that that is giving you a good idea. And I think if we go over now and do a little bit of the snail. And if now that you've started doing this dark colour, I would always advise that you have another sheet of paper that you can put over the top like so so that when you put your hand down you're not going to smudge it all over her. so anytime you bring in your dark colors try and have another piece of paper so let's do her um the snail i've just noticed as well that i've smudged a little bit onto him so I'm going to try as well if you if, if you've got like an electric rubber I find that these lines come out even better so the line of her head will come away but if you've just got a normal rubber it will still rub it away enough that you can and anyway whenever you layer things on it'll it'll be fine so I'm just going to use um, some cream, if I can find it again. Or actually the skin tones are right, a nice one as well for a snail. So if you have your pale flesh. And then I'm not, I'm not giving him eyes because that's his eyes there. So with the pale flesh, I'm just going to... Put in a base layer and a try and do it nice and light so you can get lots of layers on there. You all know now, don't you, with your doing it nice and light. You don't need me to keep saying that, do you? So doing that for all of his body. Is everybody nice and relaxed? Let me know. Chilling out. In the zone. In the pencil zone. So there we've got our first layer. And if you have a medium, you can do a snail whatever colour you like, you know. It doesn't have to be these sort of shades. You can do them in the greys or in lemons or whatever. I've just decided to go for, so the skin tone, I'm on the medium flesh now. And then just from the outside, it's like when we're doing the skin. Just keeping it on the outside and graduating in. Uh, 
and around the top bit here of his head. So it's mostly around the outsides and then on the bottom part. I've never actually coloured a snail before, so this is my first time doing <laughs> colouring a snail. So we'll just hope that it works. If it doesn't matter, does it? So if you imagine where his shell is going to be, it's going to be at its darkest because that's going to be a, like a shadow coming down. Now you can choose to do his shell beautiful colours if you like. You know, or have him in the browns like he would normally be, or greys. Not even I don't even know what colour a snail is actually. <laughs> so I don't know how this is going to work. But it doesn't matter. I think they're kind of greyish normally, aren't they? Yeah, no, they're grey, yellowish. I think. Anyway, tonight he's pink. So, you know, will we do some oranges on his shell, I think? Or will we do the colours of her eyes? It's up to you. I'm going to do some oranges. So I'm going to start off with a light, a light shade of orange. Um, which one will I use? So I've got this, um, it's almost like a yellow. So it's like a dark chrome yellow. I'm going to just sharpen it up a little bit and we'll start getting his shell done. Oh. Oops, sorry everybody, bumping the camera. So I'm just going to cover up the hair again just to keep it. Right, and I'm going to start on the outside line and just little circular motions just start to colour his shell with the lightest tone first and like when you know when we've done the roses before it's a similar sort of concept where you're having it between each line so having it darkest between each line if that makes sense But we'll get this first layer on. I'm hoping that you're all enjoying your colouring sets. It would be nice to hear how how you're finding them. Because it's my first time ever doing it. If there's anything about them that you're not liking, you know, let me know. And it'll help me going forward for, for doing new things because I want to make sure that you're happy with what you've got, that you're enjoying them. So I'm leaving some areas that are going to have a little bit of white and I'm making sure that when I'm on the lines that I'm going over both sides of the line. So I'm almost following the swirl but leaving some white areas because he's going to have some shiny bits in his in his shell as well. So hopefully you can kind of see that. Right, I'm now going to get a darker orange. And the one I'm going to use is the Cadmian orange. Yeah, use this one that's sharper. And do the same again. So keeping his shell darker at the bottom. Again, because that's where the shadow is. And some of that orange can come over onto his body as well, just to build up a bit of a, a bit of interest. And then again, going in between each line but leaving a little bit of white in between just to give him a shine every now and again I 
And so I'm looking forward to our free Zoom class. I've got quite a lot of you already, so that's good. It'd be nice because we can sit and chat to each other. We can um, colour along. I'll be doing the eyes of freedom. So I'm going to be doing freedom for that. Showing you how to create mystery and and same, we're going to be doing the eye of presence. So that's free because, you know, we're in lockdown and we just need things to do. So it'll be quite nice. And it allows people to not feel like they're isolated. It's given us opportunities to be connected to each other, support each other, and just try our best just to enjoy something that we enjoy. <laughs> that doesn't make sense, enjoy something we enjoy. Right, I'm all, so yeah, I'm going to bring a little bit more orange from his shell down onto his body as well from here. And the same coming here just under his tail. Right, now I'm going to use the burnt okra. And I'm going to use it to every now and again just emphasise these swirls. So I'm not going to do it all the way around, but just deepening, making his shell look a little bit deeper by adding these. Maybe do one down here. And maybe one here. Right, and I'm going to use this same pencil to emphasise some more darker areas at the bottom of the snail. So you can add more of the light flesh to deepen the to deepen give it more layers at the top and then just try to keep it that it's darker at the bottom. So I'm just gonna darken this area and then as well maybe have it coming in a bit more to his shell. So, I mean, you can go to town with your shell. If you've got gel pens and things, you could get some glitter and things in there, couldn't you? And right, so he needs a few more layers, but hopefully, you know, he's starting. you're starting to see how you can build him up there just by adding some different colours. And with a black micron pen, I'm going to emphasise his eyes or his antenna eyes or whatever they are. And maybe put a little bit of black every now and again into his shell as well. You can use just your normal pencil for that if you're not feeling confident. But it would tend to be darker as well. I'll get my black pencil and make this bit underneath his shell black. And if you if you go right into the the actual line and then just every now and again drag that colour out, then you can create a nice shadow. Keep it light. And have some of that going on to his shell as well. And then you can deepen that by pressing in darker. Once you've got that shadow on both areas, you can deepen that. Like when we're doing the eyes, once you're happy and you know exactly where that line is, you can press in hard. And then just softly drag some shadow out from there. And it'll be the same at the bottom when he's on our hair. So 
we could do with getting some more hair in there you know but again like what we did with the flower take the hair all the way up to to his body you know i'm just using black but use your normal colors that we've been using and have it meet yeah um you could put some reds in there as well to really get his or dark and a darker orange to start to, so this orange that i've got is um, a dark cadmium orange and bring that up from the bottom of his shell and just every now and again have it darker then it'll start to build up but just try and have little white areas to have a, a little bit of shine on there. I'm just going to use this orange to highlight the top of his shell as well. And the bottom in here. Yeah, we definitely bring some reds in and, and get get it really vibrant. I mean, you could use Nouveau drops and on the things like that as well if you wanted to, or glossy accents and fill his whole shell and give it a proper shine over the top. Once you've got all your colours on there, I do like glossy accents. I don't know, you've probably got them. You're all, you all like your crafty supplies, don't you? I'm just going to emphasise this. So if there's any lines that are starting to feel really faded out, you know, you can bring in a darker colour and try and just emphasise them. And if you have it staggered so that that was a brown and then now it's an orange, then it just gives it a bit more interest. So if I bring in the, um, what colour was that? The burnt okra and have it finish off where we didn't do orange. And just keep highlighting them. You should eventually start to come together. I'm just going to put another bit down here. Right, if we get some red in there as well, and then we'll do a little bit of this flower. Just need to sharpen so this one that i've got is what is it the light to see so it's a light cadmium red it and nearly drop it it doesn't work and just start to get some darker colors in there i mean if you want to you can do little squiggles and things to add more interest it's up to you but there oh gosh there it's eight o'clock so i'm hoping that facebook doesn't shut me off again like what it did last week if it does i'm sorry but i'm hoping it won't right i don't think i'm going to have time to do the flower am i i do a little bit in the end of his tail red and just maybe a wee bit up here just to emphasize Anyway, hopefully you've got an idea of how you can really um, manipulate the artwork so that it's not just how how it's how it is originally like that, you know. 
you can change it. You can rub out that heart as well and give it a bee or something or give it a flower. But um, I'm going to try and do a little bit more of the hair up towards the snail to help you out a little bit. So I've gone back to the lightest one that we did, the burnt okra. And from the snail, working our way down. And then from the flower, working our way up. Just to show you how you can do it in between things. I'm going to put some of that colour in here as well. So her head, so there's the line where her head is. So just imagine it's going through the snail and ending about there. And then just put some hair lines in there as well. I haven't looked to see if anybody you have been chatting to me. Oh, hi, Elizabeth, you're loving your colouring sets. Oh, that is so lovely. I'm really pleased about that. Thank you for letting me know. That really makes my day. So hopefully you've maybe found some girls that are your favourites that you can, with having the other sizes, you can spend time doing them as well. So I'm just going to bring some of that colour over into the rest of her hair as well. You know, and as well, you know, bring it in from the top and um, we'll just bring this hair down through that line that we've created for her garland and just just filling in around the flowers and you can go over that line with your micron pen once you're happy And make it black once you've, you know, that, that needs to be blacking underneath that snail to emphasise the shadow and that it's sitting on our hair. We'll do that in a minute. Just get this first layer for this side done. And just sweeping it down to go on these wispy bits as well. You can make them longer. If you want. Or not. Right, so now we just need to bring in some of the darker ones. So like what we did over at this side. So going up the scale to the next tone. Which was, I think it was the Van Dyck brown, wasn't it? can't remember. Just trying to get in as well around that flower to make it look like it's got a shadow around it as well. Just if you go in under under this bit at the bottom with your black or the, a darker brown as well and you put in a little shadow under there that'll help to make it look like the flower's sitting on top of her head and it's causing a shadow. I think it's the quickest hour of the day when we do the Facebook Lives, isn't it? So yeah, if anybody is going to join me on the free Zoom, class i have sent it out in my newsletter if you're just new and you haven't been involved with any of my um facebook lives or anything and you would like to do a free zoom if you can send me your email address 
then I can send you over the link. It's going to be on the 14th of November on Saturday. It's a Saturday and it's at two o'clock. So, you know, feel free to message me and I'll send you over the details and the link for that. And if you haven't got done Zoom before, you know, it's really, really easy. It's just an app that you download. You can download it on your tablet or on your PC or your phone. And it's just, it just allows you to, you can talk to me, you can talk to other people there. And it's just a nice interactive way, especially with the way things are at the minute. It just helps you feel like you're a part of something. And I will be showing you how to add emotion into eyes for both a girl and a deer. And it's free. You know, it's just a nice way to relax and either learn a new skill if you've never done drawing before or enhance the skills that you've already got. And I'll be using a, a template. So I'm going to be using the eyes of freedom and the eyes of presence, the deer. And they are on my website where you can, they're free for you to go onto my website and download. It'll just be the eyes as a template. And then there's a couple of options there that you can practice. And I'll be showing you how to do them on a Zoom class. And, um, you know, hopefully it's something that you'll enjoy. Just nice to feel like you, you know, it's awful that we're having to stay in and, but it's the right thing to do to, you know, get this under control, hopefully. And I'm just trying to do my little bit. I hate thinking of anybody being at home alone. So I'm just trying to do little bits here and there to, to help out. So I'm just causing a little bit more shadow underneath this snail. So I'm just doing little circular motions, keeping it light, but just doing lots of them to make him look like he's sitting on her hair. So I'm aware we've gone over time. If Facebook cuts out, I'm sorry, but I'll just keep going to um, try and get as much of this done. So if you can then use your darkest one, the, the walnut brown, and just do some more of the same. So I'm assuming that this side of her hair is going to be at its darkest because she's got a flower, she's got a snail, and all the lights sitting here on the top of her head. So I'm going to make this dark. I'm not going to have any light in there. And I'm going to also make it darker underneath the petals of this flower just now. So you can... Spend some time just colouring those however way you like and just to have that shadow in under there and try and have the lines cut. And then again, darker in here. So I tend to do a little bit of black in there as well. So sometimes it takes a little while for your picture to build up, but I'm hoping that you can see that by doing lots of layers... It slowly comes together. I'm hoping just have no white between whatever objects in our hair and then have the lines flow from there to make it look cohesive. And then I'm going to make some of these dark as well, but some of them light. So starting, I don't ever know what, what you're seeing, whether it's coming across okay on camera or not. I'm just going to darken this up as well, going up towards the snail. From here and then coming from under this flower as well needs to be darker as well. Just 
try and use your little secular motions to do that. So I'm using the Dick Van Brown, just the Dick Van, no, the, sorry, the Walnut Brown just now to darken that. But I would go in under there with the black and the same underneath her fringe. So if you want to emphasise every now and again, you use your black and then use your, like your pale shades of skin to try and build that up and then get a shadow in under there. Starting off with the light, then the darker you can use browns and purples and things. You can use your blue, like what we did in her eye, coming in under her hair as well, if you want to. So, I think I need to leave it at that. I'm hoping. Let me know if, if I helped you at all. Let me, let me see what hair you've done in the group. Um, let me see whether you've done flowers and a garland. <laughs> I do like to see so just with a black fine line actually just to so that we can see this line just emphasize it and then color your little leaves and your flowers and things you know you could once you've done that you could have the line going across her head as well so it just looks like she's got a headband or something it's up to you. Hopefully I've given you some options. Okay then everybody. It was lovely to see you. All good pa. I'm happy that you enjoyed it. I hope you're staying safe and well. I um, shall look forward to. We've got some Zoom classes. Other Zoom classes as well. That I know that you're on pa. Look forward to that. Um, thank you Denise. Happy you enjoyed it. And you too Rebecca. I'm so happy you joined you joined me it's nice to have company and thank you heather you enjoyed listening watching and drawing that's lovely and marie lovely to see you again and sarah thank you stay safe everybody take care bye bye dawn